Welcome back. In this video, I want to review with you how to create new types with C. There are three options that I want to describe, type def, enum, and the struct type. Type def allow us to create an alias for a type. For instance, in the example, boolean or flag type are used alias for int and char. So x is a variable of type int and y is a variable of type char. Using boolean or int is exactly the same. Using flag type or char is the same. You just create a new name for a type that already exists. As a second example here, cat and dog are alias for int and letter is an alias for char. So later, you can create this variable x, that is a letter, a char, and you can create variables 1 and 2 and use as a type cat, but they are really integer. So you can assign the value 1 or 2 to those variables. Type def can be used with enum to create an alias for the integer type and to define alias for the values that are valid. For instance, in the first case, boolean is an alias of int, but there are two values that are valid, false and true. False is a label for zero, and true is a label for one. Also, days is an other alias for the int type, and we define that the values that are valid are those in the list, but basically they are numbers, where sum represents zero, mon represent one, and so on. So in the example, you can create a variable a and make it equal false, but that variable is really an integer and it has a value of zero. Then x and y are days. Days is an alias for int. And when you do x equal mon, that means x equal one. And y equal five, that is the same that y equal five. So when you do Today, that is also type days, an integer, equal to x plus y, that is going to do 1 plus 5, and the result is going to be 6. So when you print the value of today, you're going to have on the screen the value 6. When you create alias for types, that helps you for the programming. And the same when you create alias for the values of a type, that helps you during the programming to remember some kind of concept like days and the name of the days. But for the programming language, you are working with numbers, integer variables and numeric values. Because they are numeric values, you can use them in any expression or a statement. For instance, you can use those values in conditions, like here. So you can compare the variable with any of those values, like bar with yes. Or you can use the variables like x in switch statements. So in this example, x is compared with the case amber, with the case red, and with the case green. And again, they are numeric values because red is 0, amber is 1, green is 2 for traffic light. And for logic, no is equal to 0 and yes is equal to 1. Struct allow us to create a type that is a collection of variables. This is like a class in Java, but without methods. We use the keyword struct, followed by the name that we want to use for the struct. For instance, if we want to create a record for a person, we can create a struct person. Then, inside curly bracket, like you did with classes in Java, you're going to put a list of variables that are going to be part of this struct. You put the type and the name of the variable. For instance, for the person, if you want to store the name, you can use an array char. And we can add an integer variable id. As you can notice, the struct is created outside of the method. Then we can use the struct to create variables. For instance, here, we're creating two local variables, x and y. They are of type struct person, 
Notice that we use both words, the keyword struct and the name of the struct that we created before. And you could find familiar this notation in which you put the name of the struct, in this case x, dot, and the name of the variables that you have inside of the struct. So you can use x.name and x.id and store values in those variables. Also, if you want to print the values of the variables, you can use x.name and x.id inside of a printf instruction. Obviously, we can create global variables from structs. Moreover, we can create arrays of structs. For instance, here, we can create this array contact book with 100 elements and each of the elements is a contact and contact is this struct in which each contact have a name, a phone and an email. Again, name and email are arrays of charts because that is the representation of a string in C. Later, in main for instance, you can access each of the elements in the array using an index inside of a square bracket, as usual. And you use the dot to access the variables inside of the struct. So you have this contact book, the index, that is the position of the element in the array, dot phone, dot name, and dot email, which is the same notation that you could use in Java to access an array of objects. Finally, something that we can do is to create pointers to structs. As we did with other types, in order to create a pointer to a struct, you put the asterisk between the type and the name of the variable. In order to access the data in the struct, you use the asterisk also, like here and then the dot and the name of the variable inside of the struct. However, an equivalent notation do this one, asterisk, name of the struct, dot, is the use of the arrow, like here. When you have a pointer to a struct, you can replace the asterisk and the dot for a minus and a greater than symbol that together represent this arrow, so you can use the pointer, the arrow, and the name of the variable in the struct. And that's it. See you next week.